In this video, we'll talk about Neisseria meningitis. So Neisseria is basically a gram-negative bacterium that can cause meningitis and other kind of meningococcal infections such as meningococcemia, which is a life-threatening sepsis in newborn. Here are the general characteristics of this bacteria. It's gram-negative diplococcus, they are kidney-shaped, they are oxidase-positive, catalase-positive and they have polysaccharide capsule. Polysaccharide capsule is really important for their virulence. Now virulence factors involve the capsule basically which protects them from phagocytosis. They have pili which help them to attach to many other surfaces. They have endotoxin such as lipooligosaccharide. Remember that this is lipooligosaccharide and not lipopolysaccharide which is present in many other bacteria. They also create a protein known as IgA protease which clips off secretory IgA protein which aid them the advantage to colonize mucosa. Okay, let's talk about the serotypes of Neisseria meningitis because that's important. Based on the capsular polysaccharides, there are at least 13 subgroups or serogroups of uh, Neisseria meningitis. And basically, these are known as basically serotype, serogroups A, B, C, W135 and Y. These are the most relevant ones. And they have different prevalence in different parts of the country, uh, parts of the world. And also their structure is a bit different compared to each other. Now, each of these zero groups are further subdivided into zero types, making them quite diverse. Now, the polysaccharide is pretty unique because it generally any bacteria is engulfed by macrophages or any other phagocytotic cell. But due to this polysaccharide, these bacteria can evade phagocytosis, which make them more virulent. So question is, how does the infection of Neisseria meningitis spread? But before that, let us tell you that these are a bit different from other meningococcus because they can form at maltose alongside glucose. And people with sickle cell anemia and asplenic condition are more susceptible for the infection of uh, meningococcus. So this is spread by coughing, sneezing and kissing. It's kind of like a droplet infection and it's spread quickly in the crowded area such as let's say college dorm where there are a lot of interactions. So how does the bacteria cause meningitis? First thing, the nasopharynx is the location where they can colonize. And in the nasopharynx there are a lot of blood vessels, right? And they can actually pass to these blood vessels, move into the bloodstream. They can circulate through the bloodstream, eventually they can reach the brain and they can breach the blood-brain barrier which protects the brain from harmful substances in the blood and they can ultimately go to the meninges and inflame that causing inflammation and meningitis. So basically meningitis means inflammation of the meninges which lead to sudden onset of fever, headache and knuckle rigidity. And there is also photophobia, altered mental status and nausea or vomiting like feeling. So diagnosis of Neisseria meningitis can be done using gram staining. One can easily spot out those diplococci appear like appearance in the cerebrospinal fluid. Second thing is like microscopic examination of the cerebrospinal fluid, blood cultures, etc. So in the basically cerebrospinal fluid, there are altered characteristics. There are obviously more neutrophils and these kind of bacteria alongside that. So they can be grown on um, chocolate agar, not in the blood agar because blood agar has some inhibitory substance and when it gets denatured when you make chocolate agar, higher martin agar is more selective. It has antibody cocktail which allows selective growth of uh, Neisseria meningitis. Also, there are many tests such as uh, latex agglutination test and PCR based test to diagnose Neisseria meningitis. So the treatment of Neisseria meningitis has to be done with antibiotics because this is a bacteria. Uh, so the antibiotic of choice is ceftriazoxone and uh, cefotaxime. I always confuse the names 
but anyway basically a broad spectrum antibiotic could be used to start the treatment specific therapy involves penicillin g if it is uh, susceptible so if that particular serotype is susceptible to penicillin g then this is the choice other than that supportive uh, care fluid uh, and other kind of uh, supportive care is important now when it comes to vaccination there are different types of vaccination such as mcv4 vaccination which covers four serogroups and a subgroup b a meningococcal vaccine which basically is against the uh, serogroup b so here are some key points to remember it has a rapid progression and high mortality rate if untreated and the early recognition and prompt antibiotic therapy is critical for better survival vaccination is really important because prevention is better than cure so i hope this video was useful if you like this video give it a quick thumbs up you can get more notes flashcards in our facebook page instagram page and in our website do check out the links all are provided in the description see you in next video